was just gonna say it wasn't my favorite five star read i absolutely loved this book one of my favorite books that i have ever read Hey guys, it's Tib and welcome back to my channel. You already know what today's video is, so I do not need to tell you twice. What is up? <laughs> so uh, this month I only read four books, but honestly that is really good for me and I am happy and proud of myself. I know a lot of people read a lot more than me, but four books for me is really good because I literally just started reading in last August. So with that being said, we're gonna get into all the books that I read. So we started this month off not on a great foot. Um, the first book I read, uh, we're just gonna say it wasn't my favorite and that is City of Endless Night by Preston and Child. I'm gonna go ahead and read the synopsis for you guys and then I will go ahead and tell you guys my review and what I thought about it and all that kind of stuff. So when Grace Osman, the beautiful and reckless daughter of a wealthy tech billionaire first goes missing, the NYPD assumes she has simply sped off on another wild adventure until the young woman's body is discovered in an abandoned warehouse in Queens, the head nowhere to be found. So I went into this book with very very high hopes, very high expectations, because the synopsis sounded so good like a girl gets murdered the head is missing sounds amazing right I feel like this book had amazing potential of what the story was and the storyline but I feel like it kind of fell flat there was a lot of stuff in this book that was completely unnecessary to the story it also follows so many POVs so many POVs and I am normally someone who loves different POVs in books but with this book it followed so many one of which that I genuinely feel was completely pointless to the story. I feel like it literally added nothing and this book could have been like a hundred pages shorter if that POV was not involved. Um, I gave this book a 2.5 out of five stars. It, this is the lowest book I've ever rated since I started reading. I really just did not enjoy it. There was this one chapter that did follow the murderer and I thought that chapter was really cool. I loved how that chapter was done, but there was no other chapter in the book like that. Also, I don't know if any Anybody else who has read this guessed who the killer was basically from like the fifth or whatever chapter but I guessed the killer so early on in this book and that was also something that was very disappointing to me because this book felt like a book that you're not supposed to know who it is until they reveal it to you but I guessed it so early on that I was left very disappointed so yeah it had amazing potential and just did not live up to what it could have been I just feel like it just wasn't done very well I don't know I saw this book is very highly rated on Goodreads so I feel like I'm kind of the odd one out in this but I just really didn't like it. Two and a half out of five stars for me. Did not really love it. Honestly wish I could get the hours back that I spent reading this book. <laughs> okay next book I read this month was a five star read. I absolutely loved this book. Every single word in this book like I genuinely was hooked from the start and I just loved it and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book was highly recommended to me. My sister's wife actually told me that I should read this and it just so happened to be on my January TBR. So I was very excited to read it since she spoke so highly of it and I ended up absolutely loving it. I cried so many times while reading this book and there was a plot twist that I was not expecting. I had my guesses about what was gonna happen but I just was so wrong. <laughs> Reclusive Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo is finally ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. But when she chooses unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant to write her story, no one is more astounded than Monique herself. Determined to use this opportunity to jumpstart her career, Monique listens in fascination. From making her way to Los Angeles in the 1950s to leaving show business in the 80s, and of course, the seven husbands along the way, Evelyn unspools a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship, and great forbidden love. But as Evelyn's story nears its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life intersects with Monique own in a tragic and irreversible ways. This book, oh my gosh, like I just got chills reading it, like thinking about everything that happens in this book. I truly, genuinely loved this book. It was such an amazing thing going from reading this book that I literally did not like to reading this book that was an absolute five stars, absolutely loved. I loved hearing about every single husband because through this book, there's a part in each book for each husband. And I just love hearing about each of her husbands and their relationship. And then also her friends 
friendships, her life working in Hollywood, and just everything leading up to where she was at today, and the plot twist of how her and Monique's life intersects. I was shocked to say the least. I don't know how I did not see it coming, but I did not see it coming. This book seriously had me crying so many times, like literally sobbing at this book in so many different parts. It was just so, so good. Literally five out of five stars. I don't think I could recommend this book enough. Okay, moving on to the third book I read this month, which was also a five star read, which was really nice. And that is Murdered at 17 by Christine Conrad. This is a YA mystery thriller book. And let me just say, it sounded amazing and it definitely lived up to the hype. Pretty and popular 17 year old Brooke Emerson is the envy of her classmates and even some of her closest friends. But while she seems to have it all, Brooke has never felt so lost. Ever since she sustained a head injury during a cheerleading stunt the previous year, she suffered from a disorder that causes her to fly into uncontrollable, sometimes violent rages. As hard as she tries to keep it together, she finds herself in danger of jeopardizing her seemingly perfect life. It isn't until Brooke meets Jake, a handsome, charismatic stranger, that she feels like she's finally found someone who not only understands her but accepts her for who she is. But as tempting as it is to get swept up in the romance, she can't help but feel like there is something in the relationship that isn't quite right. However, when her best friend is brutally murdered, Brooke has no choice but to depend on him, especially because she is worried that she is the killer. When I tell you that this book lived up to every expectation I had of it and more, this book, I seriously would like give this six out of five stars if I could. I genuinely loved this. This was the second ever mystery thriller book I've ever read. And I feel like even though it's YA, it was done so good. The way they showed her disorder and her violent rages with her friends, her family alone, just anything, the way they showed that was just so good. It was almost like you were feeling it with her, at least for me. And the way they showed her and Jake's relationship, I feel like it was just, it was done incredible. I loved the writing of this book. I flew through this book. I feel like this is the type of book that you, at least for me, I kind of knew who the killer was from the beginning, but I felt like it was meant to be that way. It's like, you know who did it, but you don't know why. And you don't know the full story. You don't know what happened and you don't understand why did it happen. And so when that finally unfolds, it's like crazy. Like, crazy, crazy, crazy. It was so good. I would seriously recommend this to literally everyone if you're trying to read like a mystery thriller, but maybe you don't want to read one that's like super scary and gonna get you scared because I was kind of worried about that because I get scared very easily. And this was just done so, so good. Five out of five stars. So good. Okay, the last book I read in the month of January, which also just so happens to be my favorite book that I read in January and one of my favorite books that I have ever read, and that is Magnolia. Leah Parks by Jessa Hastings. Oh my god. Okay, I heard so many people say that this book is like Gossip Girl, but in London, that kind of vibe. And I went into it thinking, okay, there's no way it actually has that kind of vibe. And it does. And when I say I love Gossip Girl, so I was really hoping that it did. And it does. It so, so much lived up to the hype. I cannot wait to buy the last three in this series and read them. I literally loved this book so freaking much. And I went into this book completely blind other than people saying that it reminded them of Gossip Girl. So going through the story, I just like, I love the toxicity, the rich kids that think they can do whatever they want. So it's about Magnolia and BJ and their relationship. It is a very toxic relationship. They have been together ever since they were super young, but something happens and they break up. But instead of fully breaking up like normal people would, they still see each other. They still talk. They still hang out, but they're not together together and they anytime they want to try to get back together something happens they're constantly fighting they're constantly going at each other's throat he's constantly sleeping with people she's constantly getting new boyfriends but they're still so close yet so far apart and you don't know like what exactly happened that broke them up and why it happened and so when you finally find out at the end of the book it's like I loved going through the story. I loved the characters. I literally loved being in this world and I cannot wait to read the rest of them. This is seriously a book that I would truly, truly rate six, seven, eight, nine, ten out of five stars if I could. <sighs> and if you've read this book, I just want to say to those of you that have, me personally, me personally, I love Tom. Tom England. Tom England. Tom 
England. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just love him. Like, I just love him so much. <laughs> so, those are the four books that I read in January. I will say, I did start reading Love and Other Words in January, but I finished it in February, so I'm not including it in this video. But I will say, the video before this one is a reading vlog of me reading this. It has spoilers, so be warned if you want to watch that. It does have a shitload of spoilers in it. But this book, oh my god, I'm not going to say much other than favorite book I have ever read in my entire life. So if you haven't seen that reading vlog, you should definitely go watch it. I will have it linked below and it will be in one of the corners for you guys to watch. But if you want to see my February TBR, that is going to be the video after this one. So stay tuned and that will be up literally two days after this one. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, do not forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already because we have a lot of fun over here and we want you to join the fun. Okay. Okay. I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.